Hi, welcome to uh, Streamline your calendar year with Sage Office Connector. Um, I am the host, Vincent Pate, and I'm going to present to you guys here James Coyle, who will be introducing the Sage Office Connector product to you and specifically how it can help you with your calendar year end. Uh, James, take it away. Thanks very much, Vincent, and thank you everyone for choosing to participate. And for those of, the, of you watching this as a recorded presentation, thank you also for that. Um, I want to talk about what the presentation is and, and what it isn't right off the bat. So there is a year-end guide for Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate that will go over a lot of information that will impact you know, various different, uh, different aspects of your product. This is going to focus specifically on some of the ways that Sage Office Connector can positively impact your year-end. So it's not the year-end you know, guide is, is per se, but cer certainly how one of the Sage products can help all the other ones. It also is not a the general presentation that we sometimes do you know, on a regular basis where we're showing all of Office Connector. This is going to very specifically focus on the kinds of things that uh, Office Connector can do for you at a year end. So when we look at a calendar year end, you know, the things that we think about are reconciliation, which you could also be doing all year long, um, budgeting, um, you may have been working on your budgeting. Once you get your budgeting in, uh, you know, you can then use it in your financial reporting, but what do you do to facilitate your budgeting and, and to get it into your system? We can help you in that area. Closing entries, um, we know that we deal with outsourced folks who are going to audit us and do what have, you know, whatever they do, and at some point we're given closing entries. How can Office Connector help in that area? And finally, uh, in running financials, we know that uh, until we have our closing entries, there's a process that we're taught to um, not close the, the year in general ledger and, and until we are ready to close the year. And th so this will, if this is not your fiscal uh, year end, um, this still is pertinent to whenever your fiscal year end is, although there are a lot of people who have a calendar year end. So we have a number of things that, that the technology can do. We're going to hit these right here. Reconciliation, we're going to show you some examples of that. We're going to show you a budget template, and we're going to show you ways that you can utilize it effectively. Uh, so you can work in Excel, get your entries consolidated, and then very quickly and easily put them into the system. We're, we're going to look at closing entries and how those can be put into the system and uh, the creation of uh, financials. Now there are some other things that that can that you might want to deal with at your end. There's a, we have an ACA compliance template that that's been created. There are other templates like to maintain employee information that are on the launch pad. This is a fixed time limit you know presentation. So if you want to know more about these other areas that we can positively impact you, uh, then just let us know and we'll be able to facilitate that for you. When we uh, are covering Office Connector, there are three products in the Office Connector product suite, the query, the write, the import, um, and the query and write have designer and standard licenses. Import is a site license. We can talk to you at the close of the presentation on um, which license types you may be interested in or, or adding additional ones. There's an additional license uh, along the query area called financials. And um, so if you have the query capability, you add that capability and you'll be able to do the financial reporting that we're going to be talking about. So let's just take a look at how uh, the software can help you out here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to minimize my screen here and you should see the Office Connector Launchpad. I have the Office Connector Launchpad on my desktop, also accessible on the Sage desktop, as are the, the templates. Um, when you generate workbooks, from these, you know, the templates can be added as like reports on the on your application um, menus. So that's other ways that you can get access to these reports here. And I'm just going to focus in on these here. And, and the two tabs I'm, or the three tabs I'm going to focus on are reports, import, and financials. And initially, I'm just going to focus on uh, some of these that you'll see up here at the top: the batch reconciliation. I'm going to look at that. I'm going to look at the GL Account Explorer. And I'm going to look at the um, job cost GL reconciliation. Those are the three templates I want to focus on here uh, initially. So I've got a few of those things up. I'm going to 
I've already generated them to save time. Uh, if you have Office Connector, then you can just select the uh, template there and it will generate this workbook on your data. If you don't have Office Connector and you get the software, even, even in evaluation mode, you'd be able to run this report. And you're going to have a result that's going to look like this, uh, except they're going to be your batches. So in this situation, we're giving you the ability to, to look at all your general ledger batches, looking in both your current and history file, where you can quickly identify if a batch is out of proof. Now that's something you could have been doing all year long. You probably should have been doing that all year long. So if you've had Office Connector and you weren't doing this, you probably should have been doing this because it's uh, useful. But if you found something out of proof, you could investigate it. But another thing that people do is during, especially auditors, during an audit process, they may want to look into certain batches. So I can identify a specific application in a time range and see the batches that impact that. Or I can focus in on a batch that might look odd. So look at this one right here at the top. It's got no debit, no credit. So why is that? So that's AP uh, batch nine. So I come here to my batch details page, I can put in AP batch nine yeah. and I can refresh it. Did, was there a question? All right. I thought somebody popped in with a question here. So I put in a certain application origin, a certain batch, and clearly the totals here are blank, but there's detail down here. So when you see things like this, that could possibly be something suspicious. Uh, but, but in any case, this gives you an, a means to organize information, you know, very easily, as opposed to running a, a quite a few different reports. You'd have to get to get this kind of information. Otherwise, it'd be a number of different reports that you'd be running in your Sage application. So I can look at my accounts payable. I can look at each application to see how that batch may have impacted it, and all the way through, you know, the system. And of course, the general ledger detail is on that first page. So batch reconciliation is one area. Now, if there, I'm going to close these, so if you have a question about it later, we'll have to reopen it up, but it will give me to, uh, save some uh, memory so I don't run out of memory issues. Now, I'm going to look at the Account Explorer as another option, and this is going to allow me, when I generate this, there's an administration page where I can put in a mask. A percent sign means all accounts, but I could put in like 10 dash percent, and it would be everything that started with a 10. You know, I can use wild cards in this area. I can look at my method of accounting and exclude certain accounts. But by re refreshing, I'm going to get my general ledger account activity and balance. And I can then, with this, something is drill down enabled. So if I wanted to see what was made up one of these accounts that I'm trying to investigate, maybe this accrual, I can just double click it, and it will pass the parameters to another query, another report, so it does drill down. Not a pivot table, this is more. Um, if we, we couldn't pull all your general ledger uh, into um, Excel, most likely, you probably have so much detail in there, it would take a long time to do it anyway. It's not practical, and you don't have to do that with Office Connector. We can pull the detail that you need to back up totals just with a click. And this particular one, I could see it, I could focus in on that particular batch. Now I see other entries. And if this had something to do with an invoice or a check, this is already ready to drill down into invoice and check detail. Um, and this can, if you have the designer license, you could expand this template's capability to drill into more, like payroll, property management, you know, job costs, whatever it is. Um, this is just as far as the substantially complete example here uh, goes. But it goes quite far, so you can use this in your process. Uh, in your, your end. Another template I want to show you is just, this is, this is one that is going to reconcile job costs in GL. And you could create your own reconciliation templates to reconcile any application to any other applications. This one just demonstrates a, a way to go about doing that. So, um, and if you're new to Office Connector, every template, if you go to the uh, information page, will explain how to use the template, what it's purposes, what tables it uses, what applications are necessary. And in this case, it's looking at the delta between general ledger and job cost for each account and for the various different periods. So if I see a delta here, there's, there's a difference. Job cost and GL are not improved. 
and I could then look at what my detail is in general ledger and what it is in job cost. Now that might result in me wanting to pull additional detail. This template could be, or this, the results here could be drill down enabled, exactly the same way as I showed you the other one. Drill, Office Center has a drill down function, so you can build another query and pass your parameters to it and drill into it, or you can engage professional services to do that for you. Um, but the tool was created, this Office Center tool was created so that you could be able to build your own reports or add additional, you know, ad hoc capability to it. This is one example of how reconciliation can work. You can see if you complete these reconciliations in advance, then you could be doing these things during the year and catch issues that might have put you out of proof so that you have less issues to deal with at the end of the year. Now I want to show you one other template. It's on the launch pad and it's, it's called Quick View. It's, it's at the bottom. We could also call it the controller dashboard. Um, so what this does, this is actually meant for you to come in and look at every month or during the month, perhaps every day. There, you know, you could add to this, but it's a dashboard, so it's showing you here in General Ledger, I, I could add additional prefixes. It's showing me what my current period is. So if I'm not keeping my prefixes in the same period, this would tell me. It tells me about unposted entries. Here in Job Cost, it tells me what the current period is and if I have unposted entries that of course, if they're not posted, they're not represented in your accumulated detail. So that could be a reason why you might be out of proof. Um, remember I told you that you could drill down enable things. You could drill down enable that cell so it would show you the posted, the unposted entries. And it, you know, that's how these, this technology is meant to expand and do all the different types of things you might choose to do with it. So anyway, you see that it's a, a view and you could have the same kinds of views for an executive. You get the same kind of a view with for, a, um, you know, depends on whoever it is. Operations can have a view of the projects and what have you. This particular one already built and ready for the controller. So that's a quick view. And it's been there. So I've been on your, temp, your launch pad for quite a while. As long as it, that was one of the first ones, actually. Um, another thing that I want to point out is the ability to search transactions. Now, this is this is a template that's on the starter tab. It can't be expanded beyond what it does on the starter tab, but it's it's used a lot. And, and really, there's no other way to do this easily in Sage. But you could identify the applications you want to search. You can put in parameters. There's some common fields here, but beyond that, there are fields that are general ledger specific, jobs cost specific, accounts payable, et cetera. But if I get to the point where I identify the applications and parameters, I can tell it to search, and it will go out and it will look in my database for any occurrences of that, that what I told it to search for. And in, in the text that I put in, it'll look for that text anywhere in the strings, anywhere in, in the system. It tells me how many matches I have, and if I click here, I can get to exactly what I want. So fantastic audit tool right here, and you should definitely take advantage of that. So that's the things that, can, that we can do to help in your auditing and, and in research and these types of things. Another area of year-end is maintenance of information. Now, I did not go into the, um, the right payroll you know, employee, rate tables, unions, there's three templates right there that if you have payroll can be very useful. You can create the same types of templates to maintain information on accounts payable, job costs, what have you. And you can also maintain information on, on multiple tables from different applications all on one screen if, if that was a convenient way to lay out information. So you can streamline your work processes make something uh, that might take, you know, be tedious and take a long time to do, much easier to do uh, by assembling information in a useful way. It doesn't use the use of payroll. So if I was using this one right here and I was maintaining things, it does not use the use of payroll. It's just using ODBC. So I could go into setup and do this, but I could also go right in here. Now, you can't get access to payroll information unless you have the security to access that. So your state security locks access to this information, and of course all that financial information I was looking at, you can lock that down so only the appropriate people can see that kind of information. Okay, um, now I'm not gonna go into that one, uh, but I am gonna go into this, the budgeting. 
So budgeting is a very important area, and I've done a couple of things with this particular budget template. Um, I did not open that one up, so I guess I will. Here it is right here. And you probably will have assembled something uh, and then, you know, keep it running, you know, while you're doing budgeting. And, you know, if you have multiple, uh, you know, offices, perhaps a controller for different areas, then each one could have their own budget workbook. The way this works is I've got a list of accounts I'm focused on here. And when I open up this template, all, all of this is going to be blank unless I'm already working with budgets. There be there be no budgets in here. There will be nothing over here. This is stuff I've done to the template after I created it. So what the template is when you open it up is it would allow you to type information into here and then uh, up here into the uh, add-ins, if I use this icon out here, if I have the right standard license, it will write the budget information into General Ledger. You do not have to go into General Ledger and type it again. It's already right here. We'll just put it in there for you. No key entry errors. Very quick, very easy. Um, this utilizes the right capability. This is the only um, one, you know, in, inside here, when you talk about write and import, this is, budgets are the only thing that can be written, but they can also be imported. So if you've got the import budgets, then this template wouldn't work, but it could be repurposed so that the formulas were TS import formulas as opposed to write formulas. So, um, but anyway, so how, the, now I never spend time when I demonstrate this, I don't think even Vincent, you know, does in presentations, is to help we've seen people utilize this. So you, of course you could just type information in here. Another way is what I did right here is I just looked up the values of the current and then each period in, in the past. And, and there are people I see who do mathematical operations on some of these. You know, maybe they mark it up by a certain percentage and they could just copy and paste them right here. You know, and they quick and easy get the values in here. Um, now, prior to creating something like this, we've seen that people will use Excel for budgeting for lots of purposes, and they will have other workbooks or other worksheets with information. So what we want to do is, again, we're in Excel. We want to streamline processes. So I'm going to show you two ways to do that with this. Here what I've done is I've created an account, and I could have other accounts or other sheets, but I'm just focusing, say, on income. And what I did here is I, I got a list of my projects, and here I've, I've laid out the months, you know, going across the top. And then I've essentially I've summed up the, the uh, you know, the revenue. And perhaps it's the billing for each, each of these. I've summed it up across here. I might have some escalation because I'm thinking about, what I'm going to be doing next year. So maybe I've got a 4% increase and I'm thinking about whatever work we did this year, I want to increase it by 4%. Maybe I want an additional adjustment. And now I've got these totals down here. Well, now, then I might want to use this workbook next year or do it, use it for a revision later on. So what I've done is the totals, I've put names on these totals. So I'm using defined names. To do that, like if I wanted to do, let's say I was going to define this name, I just come up over here and I could say percent increase and it gets that name, okay? So I've defined the name. The reason that's so useful is, is no matter how many projects you have here, whether there's fewer or more, these cells will always have that name on them. So over here, that's what I have. I have that defined name right there. So it's pulling the January income right into there. So no matter what happens to that worksheet, it will pull it right here. And guess what? If that was in a different workbook, you could identify the workbook and the defined name, and it will pull it from another workbook. So that's one way. Well, this is the second way. This is the first way. This is the second way. Now, a third way that you could might work with this, and there's probably a lot more with Excel here, is like using um, Excel functionality. Here's a sum if function. So right here, I've got this that says, Sum if, it's just a, it's a, a Excel formula here. If I click this, you can see, I'm going to sum certain information. This is the range I want to look at. This is what I want to compare it to. And if I get a match, this is what I want to do with it. So in my example, I'm going to sum, I'm going to look, I want to look right here in column A. And if there, if the, I'm going to look at the, all the GL accounts, because that's what's in column A. No matter how many I have in here, it wouldn't matter. This formula will still work. And so I could just keep expanding this range so it's, you know, or just make it really big. 
Then I'm going to, in this, remember, I'm on this other budget sheet. So I'm showing it what it needs to match. So it has to match the account in row B22. And if I copy that formula down, it would be B23, B24, you know, whatever account I'm talking about. And then if there's a match, if it is that account, then this is what I want it to do. I want it to sum up a certain column. And here I'm summing up, you know, January, February, March, April, May, you know, so on and so forth. So if I'm right here, this has summed up all my um, bonuses. So if I, I might have an, one account in my system, but to work up my budget, I, I may have it listed several times. No matter what I do on that other sheet, I want to sum it up for January, February, March, April, May if the account is this. Well, this is a completely different account right here. And this sum still works. All I did is copy this formula down and across. That's all I had to do. I built one formula, I copied it across, I copied it down, and boom, I'm done. So that's the beauty of this summit function. They're pretty darn fantastic. <laughs> so uh, this is pretty cool. And this took me, I don't know, 15 minutes to do, 10, 10 minutes to do, you know, yesterday. And I'm not great at, at, I mean, people watching here are probably a lot better at some of these Excel functions, but I'm good enough to do this. So once I get this assembled, to get this written back into General Ledger, it's very simple. I click this button, and it uses Office Connector Write. So Office Connector Write is such a useful tool. I mean, I think that there shouldn't be a customer who doesn't have it, just because there's so many ways to more efficiently work with information and then be able to just write it back without taking it and going into another screen and typing it in there. You can tie two things together. Uh, make them very efficient. So that's the writing capability. Um, now, I want to talk about importing, and then I'm going to talk about um, financials. So I'm going to close this thing down. Okay, so when I come back up to my launch pad, I have a number of import uh, template examples here. Well, one of the ones that's most useful is this GL journal entries. It does not require Office Connector. It's just an Excel workbook that you could just give to a CPA. They could put all your journal entries in there, give it to you, and then you just hit a button and boom, it writes it into the system. So I've got an example of that right here. So let's say I've given this to my CPA. Again, the CPA has just typed these rows in here. They can add more lines. Whatever it is that they do for me, and they could, they could copy this sheet to another sheet and have – uh, you know, one company on one sheet, another and another, whatever. It wouldn't really matter. Whatever it is that they're doing, this is going to be able to create the general ledger entries for me because of this formula. I'm going to show you some formulas over here. This formula right here, this TS import formula, says that if there's values here to import to general ledger transactions. Now, you must have Office Connector import GL entries. And if you do, then no matter how many entries are on this, Hit a button and boom, they're all in there and they're all in accurately. So, and if you had Office Enter Query, you could right after you did it, uh, you know, check, you know, look at the the values that were written. Just if you wanted to, you know, spot them and see how they were, they matched what you have here. They will, but you know, some people are going to go run a report anyway, so you might as well just do it right here with Query Office Enter Query. Um, so this is one option, you know, the journal entries. Now there are other options. If it has Office Connector Query right here, it means it uses Office Connector Query perhaps to build for validation. Well, if I build something with Office Connector Query, I have to save it as values in order to give it to my CPA, or you have to give them Office Connector to install in their office. They don't need to be connected to your Sage. They don't even have to have Sage 300. All they have to do is install Office Connector, and they would then be able to use this uh, workbook. And, you know, they couldn't refresh anything, but you've refreshed it and given them it, 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 so then they can then type in the journal entries and you write it back. So the big difference here is it can do uh, validation. This one, nope, if you don't have any prefixes in your general ledger, that one's for prefixes. Notice that there's also one for direct cost, so job cost, direct cost entries. Sometimes I know that entries are going to affect job costs and also general ledger. So for people who need to do that, then you'd be using this one. And this one does use Office Center Query, so again, I refreshed. If I gave this to my CPA, then I would want to give them Office Connector um, so that they could see the result of formulas. Um, 
But I could also, alternately, just click Save As Values. And so I've built this workbook for them, I've given it to them, and then they could put the values in there. There will be validation because there's hidden worksheets here that have a list of jobs and cost codes and things to compare it against. So the strategy to, to build something that somebody's going to use is not connected to your Sage is to uh, query the information into Excel, and you know that doesn't have to be in a visible sheet. And that way, the validation can be against that list that was built, and that's what we've done, you know, in this situation. Um, and we do that a lot, like with remote time, the remote payroll ones uh, do all of that kind of thing. So there's some there's ways to get entries in from outside. So you don't have to type them in. You can do your work here, and boom, put them into the system. You could copy entries and make changes to them and put them in. You're working in Excel. The thing that's putting it into Sage is are these hidden formulas that you're not seeing over here um, that are doing the importing. Those are that's what's putting it into Sage for you. Okay, so that, that now we're going to end up with financials, um, and uh, I. I, you know, we have presentations on Office Connector Financials. We have a lot of content on YouTube on how to learn how to use financials. And we have a PowerPoint that only focuses on it that shows you, uh, you know, images of, of all the different uh, workbooks, you know, templates that come with Office Connector Financials. It's a site license. So if you have Office Connector Query, you pay one amount of money and you get financial capability. And you can run all these financials. So if I did Office Center Financial, there's a number of reasons why it's useful, a number of things that it does that, that uh, the native financial reporting inside of Sage doesn't do. And frankly, Sage competitors are, cannot do what this product does. Um, so if I'm inside of here, I could generate a workbook. When I generate a workbook, I could sell them and I consolidate prefixes. I can do all these different types of things, refresh it. I can get my trial balance and balance sheet and profit and loss. I can drill down into the detail if I, if I wanted to know what made something up. But the challenge historically, and when I was a consultant, this is the thing I had to teach people is, if you wanted to do a financial for next month or the month after or the month after, and you haven't closed your year yet, then I would teach you a process to follow. And it's just the way things are, sorry, you know, but it's not the way things are. Office Connector Financials, can do a financial statement off of a future period. So if, you, if your calendar year was your fiscal year and you put in 2016, oops, right over here, sorry, 2017, it is my general ledger, let's say, is in December 2016, but I want to do a financial for January of 2017. I go 2017, and if my fiscal year is the same as my, fiscal periods are the same as my calendar period, a one is the same. If they weren't, you put in a 101. A 101 is a calendar, um, January. Um, but again, if your fiscal periods are calendar periods, then one and 101 are the same for you. But if you do that, we will look at future balances and produce financials for you. So you can do that with this technology, and you can't do it otherwise. So you don't have to worry about this copying and cl closing the year and then doing it for February and doing it for March until you have your closing entries. Just run the report right here out of financials. Hey, okay. Hey, um, yes. Vincent? Perfect. Well, I was going to say, uh, as a, we're, we're actually hit the time, and I don't know if there's some people that have to leave early or anything like that. I wanted, oh, um, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give us a couple extra minutes. So we'll stay late to answer any questions you guys have. Uh, but could you real fast uh, jump to the, the last slide for me, James? before we, we jump back over there. Uh, I just want to let everyone know, um, especially if you had to pop off the phone right now because it's a great opportunity to say it, um, you know, Office Connector's got a lot of different module pieces to it. If you guys are interested in adding any piece you don't currently have today, you can contact us at the 800-858-7095 number or talk to your Sage business partner or email me, vincent.paid at sage.com, and I'll get you over to the right person. Everyone who has attended today, we are giving you a 10% discount uh, until the end of December. So feel free to uh, contact us, and we'll get you, um, you know, taken care of. Um, I'm also going to go ahead uh, – and say uh, James got at least one more uh, slide there to kind of give a little bit of uh, clarification on all that, and then we'll stay a couple extra minutes here for um, Q&A, and then I'll send out the recording to everyone. So uh, James, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I'll let you kind of finish off there. 
<laughs> and I was so proud. I was almost directly keeping it within 30 minutes. <laughs> challenging. But anyway, so <laughs> as you see, you have the Office Connector query is very useful. So you can use a designer standard license to run any of the things I showed you. Um, I didn't do anything, any new designing. I just re did reports that were on the menu. So Office Connector standard would work in that situation. Although if you want to build your own financials and add to them, then you know the query designer along with financials is useful. To that, if you add Office Connector write, there are a lot of capability. And as you notice, I showed you even additional ones like uh, updating payroll information and, and uh, things like that. So that does, uh, the standard license is very, very useful. Um, I showed two imports, the GL entries is one, and the job cost direct cost. And those are templates that are just right there on the launch pad. You could use those and just get those two features right there and you'd be in business. So thanks everyone uh, very much for your time. And Vincent, thank you very much for hosting this. Appreciate the opportunity. And what, one last one quick um, piece. I know I've been answering questions in the Q&A as they've come up. Um, uh, I'll give uh, one last opportunity. Any last uh, burning questions uh, for us before we, we sign off? All right. Uh, so uh, uh, one uh, last question here, and then I'll uh, go ahead and uh, sign off for us here. Uh, but can you use write to record journal entries, or does that work with import only? Uh, uh, actually, uh, James, um, I think I can answer that here. Uh, Wright can um, absolutely do both. I mean, so so both options are going to work for you, Wright or import. Um, kind of think of, uh, oh, 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 oh. well, no, no. actually, you James, you go ahead. Yeah, I'm not objective on there. He's testing me, everyone. Nice <laughs> try there, Vincent. So think about, when you think about the difference between Wright and import, think about, you know, doing entries under the tasks or maintaining something under setup in the traditional applications. If it's under setup, then it's, it's right. Now that doesn't mean that right can't impact things un, that are transactional, but the transaction must exist. So in order to create detail, payroll time, accounts payable invoices, general ledger journal entries, job cost estimates or direct cost, all of that is import. You have to import the detail. The only one that can be written or imported are general ledger budgets. That's the only one. But general ledger journal entries, that's going to be the import feature. Thank you for clarifying there. Uh, I think I was getting mixed up with that other. Okay, everyone, again, you thank you very much. You me. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thank you, James. Um, so, uh, yeah, everyone, thank you very much for your time. Don't forget, 10% off to the end of December for attending. Thank you for attending. And all the information is on the screen. I'll leave it up for another 30 seconds or so. Have a great day, everyone.